man, it is a beautiful day to cast on a new project. Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Knitty Natty. Today I'm gonna show you how I use Knit Companion to start my new sweater project. So Knit Companion is an app that you can use on your iPad, iPhone, tablet, or Android phone. I've been using it for years, I think at least two years, maybe three years to keep track of all of my knitting patterns. I love having them digitally because I can do so many more things with them. One simple thing is I just like to like blow up the charts and words really, really big, and you can't do that on paper. But there's so many magical things within Knit Companion that you can do. There's a free version, and then there's also a paid version, which is really affordable. Um, and I'm gonna show you features from both today. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you what sweater I am planning to cast on. I'm really excited about it. And I need to do everything to prep for this um, sweater. I need to get my pattern loaded into Knit Companion, get it all set up. I need to make a gauge swatch, get my needles, my project bag ready. So this is all of that like pre actual doing the project thing <laughs> that is necessary before you start a project. I like to do this over the weekend. So it is a Sunday right now. It is snowing outside. Maybe I can like show you the snow because it looks so pretty. I've got a little toaster in here with me and I just have the next few hours to like set aside and like properly do the thing because when you're starting a sweater, it's important to do all of those like particular gauge swatching, looking through the pattern, all of those things. I think more than other projects that are like hats, shawls, you know, things that don't uh, have to fit necessarily, well, hats do. So I recently knitted a hat that doesn't fit that great. So let me take back on that. Um, but I think it's just really important to do all of these things. So I'm gonna show you how I use Knit Companion as I'm getting that set up, along with a few other things. And I also wanna show you some of the new features that Knit Companion has to offer. So let's head over to my yarn shelf and talk about this project. I kind of love coming to like sit right here in front of my yarn stash. Uh, I mean, I am dwindling it down a lot and working through it. And this sweater is gonna be one of those stash projects. It's gonna use up quite a few things. Um, but I still really enjoy like looking at my yarn. Am I being strange? Do you do the same thing? <laughs> I am drinking coffee. It's my second cup from my little a tiny coffee pot. And it's just nice. This is just like the best way to like spend a weekend, I think. Okay, so I need to purchase my pattern. So let me show you what I'm going to be making. I have talked about this before. And I have this pattern in my queue right here. So you know what, I actually might turn things around so you can see the iPad, because I want this to be informative as well as like, fun and interesting too, because I think it's just, sometimes it's nice to see somebody go through this process, especially like using an app or using Ravelry or anything like that, um, because I don't see tutorials like this very often. So let me kind of move this around and show it to you a little bit better. Perfect. Okay, so here I am in Ravelry. I'm actually in my queue. I queued up a bunch of projects when I was going through my stash. And this prismatic sweater is one of the patterns that I wanted to make. I'll show you my yarn in a second. So I am going to push start project because that will take it from my queue into the project page. And setting up the project page is one of the things that I really like to do when I am getting a project started. So I'm going to go through and add like all the details. What I'll like, what I'll usually add is the needle size from the pattern. And once I swatch, I will change the needle sizes in here for myself. I also like to add a picture of the yarn, all of that. So <laughs> I'm not gonna take you through all that because that's very boring and I'll come back when I have it ready.
Okay, amazing. I am getting really excited to start this now. I sometimes starting a new project is hard because you're like one and knit the thing, but you don't want to do all the little things you need to do before. So I feel like I'm trying to romanticize it a little bit, <laughs> make it a little bit easier to do all the nitpicky things like setting up your project page, all of that, doing the swatch to make it fun and to do it right. And then when you start the project, you're not like second guessing yourself and all of that. Um, okay, so here's my project page so far. I have a picture of the yarn and I have all the yarns in there. I have the needle sizes from the pattern. Again, when I swatch, if my gauge ends up being different, I need to switch needle sizes. I'll go back in and change it, but I just like to have that set up here first. I also haven't put in the size that I'm going to make yet because we're gonna figure that out together when we look at the pattern. So this prismatic sweater is by Wool and Pine. I'll have the pattern linked down below. I love Wool and Pine sweaters. I've made two of them so far. I've made the sorrel, the summer sorrel that's short sleeved and I made the sea glass tee most recently. So here's a better photo now of that prismatic sweater just a little bit of color work and then a whole lot of simple. And I think this is gonna be good for me because I'm really into color work right now. I'm ready to kind of expand my skills. There's a few rows in this that will be three colors. I think I have just only purchased the pattern. So I haven't actually looked at it yet. That was one of the things I did when I was off camera here. Um, but I think there are some rows that have three colors and that would be expanding my color work skills. I've never done that before, or at least I haven't in a while. Okay, so let me show you the yarn I'm gonna use. It is kind of a mess because I have tried to use this yarn for so many sweaters, ripped them out. I had two, I had one that I had done a lot of and I ripped it out. And then I had kind of swatched for another, like I even have a little crochet swatch that I was thinking about doing a sweater dress a long time ago. I love this yarn. I just can't seem to love the pattern that I'm doing with it. So it's been ripped out, taken back. I think I have, four skeins that have already been wound and I actually have two right down here, two more. I have six of these. I'm not gonna need six for this sweater, I don't think. Um, no, definitely not because I got six to make this really long card again. So I will have plenty. I'm not even gonna wind up these other two. They could potentially be used for something later. Maybe I'll de-stash them, I don't know. But this is, um, I don't even think I have a tag. This is Suburban Stitcher. Um, in Cinder and all of these are now linked in my project page. I do think that Diane still dyes this colorway because it's been a really popular one. And then this is a scrap. I have, actually, I don't want to reach for the scale right now. I'm not sure exactly how much I have of this, but I do believe I looked at my size and I think I have enough to do the, the prismatic part, like the part here that's kind of multicolored greens and blues and stuff like that. And then the other color that I'm gonna be using is this. So both, actually all three of these I used in my shellography and I just thought they were so pretty together. So this is gonna be like that outline part, that's gonna be the kind of window pane looking and then this is gonna be the majority of the sweater. And this has like black flecks in it. So I think that's gonna look so good because this is like so dark, it's almost black. Anyway, I think this is gonna work out really pretty. I'm excited to cast it on, but we have to do the hard work first. We gotta do the preparation. So let me show you how to get this pattern into Knit Companion so we can look at some really important things like the gauge, the sizing, and how we can get things set up. Plus, I wanna show you how we can use these new knitting calculators in Knit Companion. All right, so now we're here in Knit Companion and there's always a few ways you can get your patterns. You can get them directly through Ravelry, which is what I'm gonna do. If you have a PDF because you got the pattern from somewhere else, you can put it into Dropbox. Or let's say you like open up the pattern in your email or Ravelry and there's always like an arrow to share. You can hit that arrow and choose Knit Companion and it will bring you straight over to the app. So let's drag this in through Ravelry. I'm just gonna hit Ravelry here at the top. You can search by the name of the pattern or the designer. So let's search for Prismatic. It showed up right here. I'm just going to click on it. It's downloaded. Okay, great. Let's view it. Now I'm just gonna hit Start Project at the very top. Super, super easy. You can name this project something else. Like this is especially helpful, I guess, 
if you're making um, like another version, let's say I wanted to make this again and I could download it as like Prismatic 2. I'm gonna be very careful as I show this pattern because this is a paid for pattern, it is not mine. So I'm only gonna show you details that you could find in the Ravelry pattern page. All right, let's create the project here and see what we can find out. Okay, so first I wanna show you a couple things that I like to do that are kind of just like, I don't know, silly, but like they make me happy. And I like to match my highlighter to the project that I'm making. So to do that, I go over to the edit button here at the top. And then on the side here, these are our slider highlighters. So you can see that mine is pink. And whenever I insert like or pull in a new project, it's always pink. That's like my default. But if you want to change it, you can just go and make changes here. I just love to have it like as close to the color of like what I am actually making. I could even make it like gray if I wanted to. I mean, you can do all sorts of things. You could also just completely turn it off by hitting the toggle button in the bottom. There's the default, um, what direction is this? Vertical? <laughs> There's the vertical stitch slider too. I find that I don't use it very often, so I actually just have mine turned off and you can do the same. So edit and then the slider bar here on the side. One other thing I like to do straight away is pull in any video tutorials from the pattern. When I clicked on the video tutorials in Prismatic though, it showed the link and the password and it's a private video because it's part of a paid pattern. So to show you this skill, I came over to another pattern, one of my own, which is Lusuo. So it's a um, knitted infinity scarf. Anyway, there's some links in this pattern. Um, right here, I've got links to different tutorials. So I wanted to show you how you can actually bring them where they are in like so. So you can see there's a linked video right here. And just in case you didn't know, because I forget this all the time, you can toggle, toggle on and off the whole bottom section right here. Same with the top. That's what these buttons are for. And then the very bottom part of it actually has three different components. So it has any linked videos. If you tap it again, you can add notes to your project. If you're not adding them directly onto the pattern, tap it once more. It will tell you how much time you're spending in the pattern. And it also has the calculators, which is a new feature that we're gonna talk about in just a minute. So let's go back to the video tab. Let me show you how to actually bring the videos in. It's really easy, it's just something that is also easy to forget, so I have to do a refresher for myself all the time. What you'll need to do first is come over on the top and click this PDF button. We can only access those links through the PDF. And then I'm gonna go to the page where I saw those links, which are right here, and I'll just um, tap one of them. I think we'll do this one because the other one was already linked. So this is a video for Knit um, One Below, so I'm going to name it Knit One below and click add my video link. Now I'll exit the PDF version and I'm back into the knit. And when I go to the bottom here, I will have my different videos. So if I just tap through, now I've got the knit one below video. The coolest thing about this is I can actually play it right within the Knit Companion app if I want to, or I can click on YouTube and it will take me over to it. Sometimes it's nice to have the video like down here as you're kind of looking at part of the pattern, and it just depends on what works best for you. All right, let's get back over to Prismatic and do a few more things to get this sweater started. I'm back over to my sweater pattern and I went ahead and linked the video. You're seeing it say, sorry, this video doesn't exist because this is a password protected video, but I can still click this link and go over to it, enter the password and it will be easy to find. By the way, the Android version of Knit Companion now has this linked video feature. I don't have an Android device to show you specifically, so I'm going to link one of Very Pink Knits tutorial videos and she shows you exactly how to go to that if you have an Android device. Okay, one other new exciting feature I wanted to show you is also in this like bottom, I don't know what to call this section, like this bottom section, if you tap through this menu, again, you can go to notes, linked videos, or you can go to this whole project timer, ruler, and calculator thing. Let's click on the calculator 
There are several different calculators now in Knit Companion that you can use. There is the increase and decrease evenly, which is going to increase or decrease evenly within one row. There is the blanket sizer, which, you know, you can make a blanket with, but really you can take your gauge and figure out how to size anything that is square or rectangular. So actually it's gonna be really useful for more than just blankets. Then we have the last set, which is the increase and decrease sleeve taper. I think this one's gonna be the most useful, of course, for my sweater that I'm doing, um, the prismatic sweater, but I just wanna briefly walk you through each of these. So let's look at the increase evenly. This is really, really great. So. Um, you can choose right now, flat or in the round. Um, so let's just say I need to in increase a bunch of stitches on a sock or something. So I'm gonna switch it to in the round. And I will say, okay, I've got um, 60 stitches and I need to increase it by 12. I need 12 more stitches. How can I do this evenly within one round? Just a little hint. This is something that I actually do in my socks before the heel because it gives me more depth to my heel. So some, it's something that I'm gonna be teaching very soon. Okay, anyway, you can use this on wherever you need to increase or decrease evenly within one round. So I have 60 stitches, we're pretending, and I'm gonna increase it by 12. So how would I do that? I hit calculate and then right here, I don't think I can zoom in, so let me pull this closer. It tells me exactly what to do. I will knit three, increase one, which is going to be like a make one increase, and then knit five, increase, knit five, increase 11 times, and in the round with knit two. This is perfectly evenly spaced because it gives me five stitches between every single increase, and I had to do zero math on my own. I think that that's so useful. I, I love that, I think that's so great. Okay, you can also hit copy to project info, and in that little notes tab, that's where that's going to appear. We're not gonna copy this one, but let's try the blanket sizer now. So this one's a little bit different. Again, you don't have to use this just for blankets. You could use it for anything that is square or rectangular. Scarf, uh, dishcloth, placemat, I don't know, whatever you're working on. And you have to have gauge swatch, so you have to know your rows and stitches per inch. Um, you could even use this in crochet, I would say. I am making my granny stripe blanket. I could totally use, I, I did do this math, but I didn't have the calculator, so this would have been really great for me. So let's just say we are doing something knitted, and we have, um, I don't know, let's do, 10 rows per inch. And then let's say my stitches per inch are like, wait, that would be really small, wouldn't it? Let me change this to 20. I mean, really large. That would've been like huge stitches. Let's say 20 rows per inch and five stitches per inch. Oh no, per four. Let's just do 20 and 20. That wouldn't probably be true, but this will help us just see how the calculator here works. So you can take your gauge. Now let's say I want this blanket that I'm making to be like baby sized. So what is that first? Blanket length, let's just say 40. And blanket width, let's say 30. So I'm gonna have a 30 by 40 inch, you can change it between inches and centimeters at the top, 30 by 40 inch blanket, and then this is my gauge. So how many stitches do I need to cast on? Don't worry, all you have to do is hit calculate, and it tells us to cast on 150 stitches, work 200 rows. You could use this for any stitch pattern. All you have to have is your gauge swatch so you know your stitches per inch. And remember when you put them in, you're putting how many stitches over four inches, right? So just make sure to get that. I think that's gonna be so useful for things other than blankets too, it's amazing. Okay, last one, let's look at this um, sleeve taper. I'm gonna choose decrease sleeve taper because this prismatic sweater, I'm going to be doing it from the top down. The sleeves are gonna be from the um, like shoulder-ish down to the wrist, right? So some things to look at carefully here. We do need our gauge again. We need the starting stitch count 
at the top of the sleeve, the ending stitch count right before the cuff, and then the length from the underarm to the cuff. So this takes into account all the decreasing or increasing you're going to do, and you need to leave room for the cuff, which is very typical of most patterns. You'll only do the decreasing until you get to the cuff, and then you will just knit the cuff straight. So let's say I have five stitches. Nope. I keep trying to do per inch, 20 stitches over four inches. I have, I don't know, um, 80 stitches to um, start at the top of the sleeve. At the end, I will need to get to uh, 56. That sounds semi-reasonable, right? I think. <laughs> I'm just making up these numbers here. Obviously, I will go into my pattern and see. And then, how long do I have to do that? The length from the underarm to the cuff, I would say my arm might be like maybe 16 inches and then another inch or so for the cuff. And of course you would have to measure this on yourself or in your pattern, it will tell you of course how many stitches you're starting with and how many you're ending with, and then you can take your own arm and figure out how to do this evenly. Because sometimes the pattern doesn't exactly work out, especially if your arms are a little longer or shorter than the model that they're using. Let's hit calculate. And this is gonna give us exactly how we need to work. So we're gonna work even for four rows and then decrease one stitch on each end of the sleeve, which in the round, this would be like at the beginning and end of the round, totally normal. And then work even for five rows and then work steps two and three. So decrease, work five rows, decrease, work five rows 12 times, then four more rows in the cuff. I love having this information because what I like to do on my sleeves is use little light bulb stitch markers to count rather than having to like measure for an inch. So we're gonna come back to this in a little bit once I actually have this sweater pattern and I'll show you how to use it to your advantage when the pattern still works for you, but you wanna know exactly how many rows you need to do on your sleeve. We are getting all the good info here. <laughs> I wanna do lots of like, teaching in this video, but I also want to keep it fun. So hopefully you're learning something and please don't be intimidated by either using Knit Companion or knitting a sweater from all of this information. This is something that I have learned in years and years and years and years. So, you know, take it all in and implement a few things in your next sweater or pattern or when you're using Knit Companion. Don't feel like you have to start everything over and do all the things that I'm talking about today. This is just like Again, this is just what I've learned from doing this so many times. Every time I make a sweater, I learn something new about what I like to knit, how I like to fit things for myself. And it's just, I wish more people would talk about it because what I'm gonna talk about next is sizing. I wish more people would talk about it because I think it's very, very helpful. Um, moving forward, when I'm like putting um, projects on Ravelry, I'm gonna try really hard to put my size that I'm making as well as my measurements at that point, because I think it, again, I think it just helps like understand fit of sweaters. So I am looking at my pattern here and I am seeing the measurements because I'm gonna pick a size next. This doesn't necessarily need to be done before I knit my swatch, but I just wanna go ahead and pick that and then I can go through the pattern and, like circle my size or highlight my size everywhere. So in the pattern, let me see if it will show, it gives me ease, zero to six inches of positive ease. So let's talk about what that means. In a sweater, um, most of the time you're gonna have positive ease. I know that I like a bit more positive ease. So like, here's my shirt right now. This is positive ease. It's extra material around your body or whatever it is, and it gives you a certain type of fit. So this has probably like at least, I would say, four inches on each side, so maybe like eight inches of positive ease on the bust, um, which is very comfortable, it's relaxed, it doesn't look sloppy, I don't think. Not that oversized things look sloppy, but like um, that's a desired like fit that sometimes you want and sometimes you don't, depending on the style of the sweater. So this sweater, this designer says, hey, listen, zero to six inches of positive ease, you choose what works best for you. This is also helpful because then I know if I'm like, between sizes, I can pick a fit that I'm gonna like. Now the bust measurements here are not the finished size. I'm sorry, 
<laughs> the bus measurements here. Okay, take that back. The bus measurements here are the finished size. I am so sorry. Sometimes I get twisted around in my words. Sometimes patterns will say, um, like to fit bust size this, but most of the time patterns don't. Most of the time the bust that they're talking about, that's the finished size. So we actually need to take our own measurements, add the positive ease and then pick a size. And so many of us forget to do this. I have a whole video just on sweater size fitting and like things you need to do. I'll make sure to link it, but let's go ahead and do mine here. I also, in my phone, I keep my measurements um, like, bust, upper bust, waist, hips. Um, but I always kind of like redo it again before I knit a sweater because unless I'm doing them like back to back because things change and that's fine. So here we go. I've got a nice flexible measuring tape. I'm going to measure my fullest bust. This could be more helpful if you have a friend. So I'm going to try to get up as high as I can. And if you're like a dressmaker, seamstress, like don't judge me for like my not great measurement skills. I'm doing the best that I can. Okay, so I usually, I'll usually put it around and then I'll like breathe in and then I will measure it because I don't want anything too tight. So I'm looking like, wait, I'm looking like I'm measuring at 34 inches today for my full bust, um, which is slightly smaller than I measured the last time. Could be a difference in just like what I'm wearing today. Um, that's great. So I'm going to take that measurement 34 and I'm going to add positive ease. I know that I don't want zero inches of positive ease because that's super tight. I think I'm going to go more for like five or six. So if I have 34 for my bust and then I go to, um, and then I add my positive ease, let's say I add 34 plus five is 39. So let me see what the sizes are and my choices here. It looks like I can choose between size 34. That's going to be zero inches of positive ease. That's going to be a no for me. <laughs> I don't want zero. I could choose 37. That's going to be um, three inches of positive ease. I think that's still a little too tight for me. The next size is 40 inches. So the difference between 40 and 34, which was my measurement, is six inches of positive ease. And the pattern says zero to six. And so I think that's gonna be my perfect size. So I'm just gonna go ahead and circle right there, 40. I know that this can be so confusing sometimes because we are like thinking that we should pick the same size as we measure, but we need to factor in ease here. So now I can just go through my entire pattern and circle, I think I'm the, third size in from the parentheses, I can circle all of those numbers and just have all that sorted out from the start. So I've gone through and I circled all of my size like in the entire pattern. <laughs> Something else that I'm looking at right now too is yardage because, and again, this is on the Ravelry project page, but it does tell me exactly how many yards I need for the main color, the contrast color, and the contrast color too. Since I'm working with a limited amount of this particular contrast color, which is my contrast color one, I really wanna make sure that I have enough yardage. So this takes a little math. I have my trusty little scale right here. Actually, I'll show you my trusty little scale. So I'm just gonna double check because I did weigh this once, but I did that a while ago. So I have, 44 grams. This is a skein of fingering weight yarn. I don't remember exactly the yardage on it, but I think it was like, actually I can look that up one second because I have this linked in my Ravelry project page. I know that a hundred grams of this is 462 yards. So I just need to do some cross multiplying and dividing. So 462 is 100 grams. So then I'm gonna do like X equals 44 grams. What is this algebra, I think? <laughs> I do this all the time. Like who said we weren't gonna use math? So let me cross multiply and divide here. 462 times 44 divided by 100. So I have 203 yards and I need 160. So it's gonna be close. I really need to get gauge. I think that that means I better not 
swatch with this yarn. Of course, I would rather do that, but because my other yarn is the same base, I'm not too worried about it. So I'm not gonna swatch with this because then I will lose this yarn and I need that extra insurance. But when I do swatch, I will use a yarn that is the same base so I can get a really good idea of what it's gonna be like. The thinking work is almost over. <laughs> it's about time to actually get some needles out and put some yarn on those needles and swatch. I know that there are people that don't swatch. And to be honest, I don't swatch for everything, but please swatch for sweaters, especially color work. Please, please don't waste your precious time like that. Take the time to swatch, it's so important. I've learned some things about doing color work, color work swatches. Um, I did a color work sweater in uh, the fall for the first time, a yoked color work sweater. And then I just did my sea glass tee, which I did swatch uh, several times for. So this sweater is a combination of stockinette stitch and color work. When I look at the gauge, again, this is all on the Ravelry project page. Um, it says, I've got like pink writing everywhere now. It says to do, okay, I can't see it when I put it up there because it's backwards for me. Okay, 28 stitches and 26 rows equal four inches in stockinette color work in the round. So keywords here are color work and in the round, which we can make both of those things happen. I have learned the cheat way to swatch in the round so that you only have to cast on like half the number of stitches you would need to actually join in the round. So I'll link that tutorial for you, maybe up here too. <laughs> um, but that's such a great way to do it. I'm gonna do that with this swatch and color work, it's so key. So what I'm actually gonna be doing, because I found that typically I need to go up a needle size in color work to match my stockinette. So I'm actually gonna swatch in stockinette stitch and in color work. I'm gonna have two different swatches, or I may do them as one big swatch, and change needle sizes, and see if those are going to work together similarly, because most of the sweater is still stockinette, but I need that color work stockinette to match things. So my guess is that I will use this larger needle in color work and then have to go down a size for the stockinette because I'm such a loose knitter, I usually have to go down a size anyway. So suggested needle sizes are three and four. Three is for the ribbing, four is for everything else. But for me, I believe, <laughs> This is just a guess I'm gonna swatch. I believe that I will need to go down to a size two for the ribbing, that I will need to go down to a size three for all of the plain stockinette, and that I will need a four for the color work. So when I do my swatch, I'm gonna do a stockinette stitch swatch on a three, and a color work swatch on the suggested needle size Four. And this is all just based on past sweaters that I've made and my best guesses. I'm going to make these swatches. I'm going to wash them, block them, and wait for them to dry. I won't know until tomorrow if it worked. Of course, I'll get a good idea today, but I'm not going to start anything today. So I'm going to get these swatches ready. I'm also going to use this swatch as an opportunity to practice using three colors in the round. So I've got the charts here for the sweater. I'm just gonna work like half of one of the charts and see how that does for me. So I am excited. I'm gonna go warm up some lunch. I'm going to put on Love is Blind because I've been binge watching this. I'm gonna start this swatch and just like enjoy the next couple of hours because it's probably gonna take me that long to knit it and just make it like fun, feeling like a knitting project instead of a chore.
swatch started, but I thought it was looking a little loose. So I know this is not blocked, washed, or really even enough of a swatch to tell, but I do like to see if I'm like sort of on track. So I just like, <laughs> I just like pinned it here to the bed and measured it. And I'm actually really close to the gauge, which is seven stitches per inch. So that is good news. I'm going to do at least double this and just the stockinette before switching needles and switching over to color work. I've got most of my stockinette swatch right here. And I'm doing this technique where you carry the yarn in the back so that you get basically a swatch in the round because you're only knitting. But I've got a whole tutorial on that that I'm linking. So I'm not gonna be able to finish this. Oh, I forgot to say I'm running out of time for what I have blocked off to do this today. I've got some other work I need to get to. So I'm probably gonna have to stop my swatch right there and work on it again later tonight. Um, but yeah, so if you wanna see the full deal, how you like finish out the swatch, washing and blocking it, I do have a tutorial on that. I'm just not gonna be able to do it here in this video. There was one more thing I wanted to show you though in Knit Companion on what I'm gonna do with the sleeves. So let me pull that up real quick. So one more tip on how you can use these new calculators, especially on sleeves. So as a reminder, they are right here when you toggle through this menu and then you'll see calculator. So let's click on that. And we're gonna to go to the decrease sleeve taper because in this project, I am gonna be doing the sleeves from the underarm down to the cuff. So I know exactly what I need to put in now because I should be getting 26 rows per four inches. And if that changes in my gauge in order to get my stitch count, I can adjust this and adjust the pattern. I know exactly where my sleeves are going to start for my size, and I know exactly where they're going to end for my size. Now let's say your pattern says to decrease every like one inch eight times, that would be eight inches, and it would be nice to know like how many rows you need to do this over. So instead of having the decreases span the entire arm, which often they do, you could actually put whatever length that decrease needs to be in. So my decreases are gonna span the length of my entire arm. This pattern actually has you knit for a little bit first and then decrease evenly all the way down before you do the cuff. So my best estimate after having that like knitting section first and then the cuff is that I will have 13 inches where these decreases are going to occur. So I have all my information, my rows per four inches, how many stitches I'm gonna have when I start the sleeve, how many I'm gonna have when I end the sleeve, and then how many inches that I'm actually gonna do this over. So let's see what this spits out for us. So at first I'll work for six rows, then I'll do a decrease round and I will follow the decrease round in my pattern, work even for eight rows and then work the decrease row again to do this evenly and then seven rows and my cuff will start. So this is really, really great. This is super useful information for me for customizing my sleeve within this sweater. I'm gonna hit copy info to project and we're gonna go back so we can find it. And if I tap through, the same menu. Now in my notes, I have those same instructions for the sleeve right here for me to access. I hope you enjoyed this video. Kind of a different take on things, all of the stuff that happens before you actually start knitting a project. Hopefully there were some tips in there that you can use in your next project or your next sweater. I will have the links to download Knit Companion for both iOS and Android devices. You can find it in the Google Play Store for Android, devi Android devices, but I'll have that link down below. And there are so many tutorials on the Knit Companion website. If there's anything specific that you're looking to learn, please go there because the tips are really, really good. And I'll have that very pink knits tutorial for the Android like video slurp thing that you can do um, linked in the description box as well. As far as this sweater goes, I'm gonna finish up swatching hopefully later tonight after I am done with my other work tasks. And for the sweater, you're just gonna to have to stay tuned, watch the podcast and see it develop. I'm really excited to get started on this sweater and I always share lots of details in my podcast every single week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna go take Toaster out and enjoy the snowy weather. Hope you have a great one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.